everybody. Today we're going to talk about graphing quadratic functions in vertex form. So we've already looked at quadratics that have been in standard form. That was when we found the models using our matrices and um, using explicit and recursive formulas. So today we're going to take a look at when the quadratic is written in vertex form. So what's great about vertex form is that it shows us the shifts in the quadratic. Okay, so if we remember back to our first unit, this h is going to shift our quadratic horizontally. Okay, and that k is going to shift our quadratic vertically. So we always want to start with that. That's really great because if I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to shift something horizontal and vertical, in a quadratic, that's actually going to give me my vertex, h comma k. Now remember that when you shift horizontally, you have a um, function that's shifting horizontally. That is going to take you to the left and to the right, but it's always opposite. So you have to watch out for that when we do these examples. Now that a value is very important in helping us decide what kind of parabola we're going to graph, right? The word parabola means that that is what the quadratic will look like. That's the name of the shape. It's a U shape. So now if A is a positive number, meaning that A is greater than zero, this is going to mean that the parabola will be opening up. Now if A is less than zero, that means that the parabola is going to open down. Okay, so a parabola that opens up will probably look something like this. Okay, it could be in any quadrant, vertex anywhere. If the parabola opened down, it would look something like this. Now, the A value also tells us how wide or steep our parabola is. Okay, now the absolute value of the A value will tell us that, right? Because obviously if A is positive, that means opening up versus opening down, A is negative. So if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, okay, then that's going to make the parabola steep. And if the absolute value of A is some sort of fraction, right, meaning that it's between 0 and 1, some sort of proper fraction, then that's going to make it a little bit wider. Okay, so a, a parabola that is steep could look something like this, awfully skinny, right, and a parabola that is wide would look something like that, okay? So when you look at a graph in vertex form, you look at an equation in vertex form, you're looking for the vertex, which you'll see right away, h and k, and then you're looking at the a value, the a value telling you what kind of a shape that parabola is gonna be in. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say I have f of x equals two times the quantity x minus four squared minus 5. All right, so right away, that vertex is h and k. So that's going to the right 4 and down 5. So that vertex is going to be at 4, negative 5 right here. So I'm going to make a table. I'm going to put 4, negative 5 right in the middle of my table because over the line, the vertical line that passes through that point, my quadratic is symmetrical. So I'm going to say that the vertex is going to be in the middle of my table because I'm going to pick some points that are to the left and to the right of the vertex. That way I can get some really nice points for my symmetrical parabola. So the great thing is, is that if I pick the value 3 for x, if I substitute that in, that's going to give me the same y value as if I were to substitute in 5 because our graph symmetrical. Same thing for 2 and 6. So let's think, if I plug in 3, if I substitute x in for 3, I get 3 minus 4, which is negative 1, squared is 1, times 2 is 2, minus 5 is negative 3. So now I have the point 3, negative 3, and 5, negative 3. Okay. If I plug in 2, or substitute in 2, I get 2 minus 4 is negative 2, squared is 4, times 2 is 8, minus 5 is positive 3. Okay, so my next point is 2, 3, and 6, 3. Okay, now 5 points is a great amount of points to plot 
when you're graphing a quadratic. Obviously, we've learned in the past that you only need three points to determine the quadratic model. Okay, so you could just plot three points if you wanted to, but sometimes five gives us sort of a better shape. Now, you might notice here that in order to get from the vertex to the next lattice point, I just have to go up two and over one, up two and to the right, up two and to the left. That's also the same as your A value. Okay, so that might, might be something that you notice when you're graphing these in class and you're doing some practice. However, this does not work all the time. Okay, so you can't always just go up the A value into the left one or up the A value into the right one. Okay, so you need to be very careful about how you think about that. So now, let's take a look at another example. Maybe we can make this one a little bit harder. Let's say that g of x equals negative 1 half quantity x plus 3 squared plus 4. So your vertex is negative 3 comma 4. So plot that first. Okay. That means that my quadratic is symmetrical over the vertical line through that point. Okay, I could even write that, that that is the line x equals negative 3. That's that vertical line. So I'm going to make my table. Okay, we'll put negative 3 comma 4 in the middle. Okay, notice that if I plug in negative 4, that'll be the same as if I were to substitute a negative 2. Same with negative 5 and negative 1. So if I plug in negative 4, I get negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. Squared is 1 times negative a half is negative a half, plus four gives me three and a half. Okay, if I substitute a negative five, negative five plus three is negative two, squared is four, times negative a half is negative two, plus four is two. Okay, so let's plot those. So we get negative four, sorry, negative four, three and a half is here. Then it comes here, negative 5, 2, and negative 1, 2. So we're noticing that this parabola is wide. Okay? Now, what you should be noticing is that your a value is negative a half. Okay? So that should already tell you that this graph is going to be wide. Now, your next lattice point isn't until negative 5, 2, and, or negative 1, 2. Okay, so be careful about trying to use that a value as a shortcut. Something to note is that uh, parabolas always have absolute extrema, right? So if the parabola opens up, it's going to have an absolute min. If the parabola opens down, it's going to have an absolute max. Something else that's important, of course, is where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So I can see here that it's going to cross the x-axis twice. Okay, because my vertex is in quadrant 2 and it's opening down. 